Lord be with you. And also Good morning and welcome to worship on Sunday we call the Transfiguration of the Lord. And the end of February, almost tomorrow. And March is going to come in beautifully tomorrow. And then the season of Lent begins on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to do a Zoom uh, Ash Wednesday service uh, from, from home, so we uh, hope you'll tune in at uh, 7 o'clock. So what I want to say to you this morning is that uh, it is true. <laughs> the, the, the email you received from me on Wednesday was, uh, was not a prank uh, email. It was from me, and it was the hardest one I've ever written, I believe. Uh, but I feel God calling me uh, to uh, my next chapter of life. Uh, I'm not getting any younger, and I feel that my family has given me up to full-time Christian service for 46 years, and that's, that's, that's enough. So I'm, I'm going to spend the rest of my years uh, uh, paying them back by spending more time with them. They may reconsider this a little bit down the road. <laughs> But I do like to travel, and so maybe uh, that'll, that'll be my, my uh, ace in the hole. But uh, thank uh, those of you who have uh, contacted me by email or phone, and uh, it means more than you can imagine. And uh, uh, we've had a, a wonderful, I think, a wonderful love affair here for 40-plus uh, for years. And uh, as hard as it is for me to, to leave you, uh, I believe the time has come. So we have two more months. I'm not gone yet. So... Um, uh, we, let's make the best of it, and uh, thank you for your understanding. Let us join together in the call to worship from that great Psalm 100. Make a, no a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And its faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God together. First, the bad news. We all fall short of our call to be faithful, beloved children of God. Now hear the good news. In hope and with boldness, we can confess our sin together, trusting that we will be heard and forgiven by God's great mercy. So let us pray together now in the context of this good news. Corporate prayer of confession printed in your bulletin to be followed by a moment of silent and individual confession. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, so that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, 
and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Hear our prayers, O Lord, both spoken and silent. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ lived for us, died for us, and was raised by God for us on the third day. Friends, believe the good news. In Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God for this inexpressible gift. Amen. <clears throat> and now may the peace that passes all understanding be with you now and forever. Let us pass the peace to one another. Let us pray. Source of all true wisdom, calm the troubled waters of our hearts and still all other voices but your own, that we may hear and obey what you tell us in your word through the power of your spirit. Amen. The first lesson today comes from Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 to 34. Listen for the word. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to, to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off. Until he came out, and when he came out, he told the Israelites what he had been commanded. The Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Time for the children's sermon. For those of you uh, at home, uh, hope you have had a good week. And Izzy had a very good week this week. 
Uh, Izzy got to go uh, up to the mountains and ski. And uh, I'm assuming that snow ski, right, Izzy? Uh, this time of year. I don't think you'd be wanting to ski on anything, anything else. Where did you go? Oh, my goodness. You went, you went to uh, Mount Everest? Uh, the, the mountain that Sir Hillary uh, discovered or climbed? Oh, no, 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 no. What, what? I, I didn't hear it right. Say it a little loud. Oh, oh, you went to Mount Everetti. Oh, hey. Uh, let's see, no, um, that, that uh, Mr. Hilarious discovered. Okay, all right, now, now I'm with you. Okay, well, I, I'm glad you didn't break any limbs. And glad you're back and uh, still have your ski cap on. So say, uh, say hello to the children at home. And uh, maybe uh, he might be in the mood to give ski lessons later. So um, this morning, I want to talk to you about another mountain called Montreat. Raise your hand if you've been to Montreat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, raise your hand if going to Montreat changed your life. Okay, all right. Uh, Montreat is a fabulous place. In fact, uh, I have a little poster here. The mountains are calling and I must go. Montreat. Relationships, renewal, recreation, rest. We've had a long tradition here at Trinity of sending our high schoolers off to Montreat for the annual youth conference where a thousand kids from around, really around the, the country, mostly the eastern seaboard, go up there for a wonderful time together. It is a special, special place. Uh, it's very important. These special places are very important in life because they allow us to get away from the normal routines that sort of uh, can really uh, be a little hard to handle every day, every day, every day. Get away for some, a, a different perspective, a different view. The mountains always give you this big horizon, panoramic view of other mountains and the the, the surrounding countryside is just so beautiful. Uh, a lot of us get the same feeling when we go to the seashore. Uh, and it's just a, a beautiful place to, to rest, to unwind. But the great thing about Montreat is that you get to rest and unwind, but you also get to go to this exciting electric uh, worship every day. They have energizers and sing these wonderful songs. Uh, they have uh, a small group leader uh, that uh, have a small group of 20, no more than 20 kids, uh, twice a day to sit and talk about their faith and their life and, uh, and God's love. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So in two weeks, our senior highs, uh, our youth groups are going to be leading worship. And uh, our uh, senior highs will be raising money to help them to pray the cause of going to Montreat this summer. So uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes open and your ears open. Uh, and, and do what you can to help them uh, go have a wonderful time on the mountaintop. There will be no skiing in July, by the way. <laughs> but uh, th they will have a wonderful, wonderful time together, I promise you. So let's hold hands and let's give thanks to God for Montreat and all the other beautiful mountains we go to to, to get closer to God and to discover uh, new friends. Let us pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the mountains. Thank you for the mountains. And the seashore. And the seashore. And the calm lakes and the quiet places that through which we go. And the calm lakes and quiet places through which we go. Let us go as often as we can. Let us go as often as we can. To renew our hearts. To renew our hearts. And strengthen our spirits. And strengthen our spirits. Love you and one another. To love you and one another. And let all God's people say together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See you next week.
second lesson this morning comes from Luke's account of the transfiguration in chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Uh, allow me to uh, uh, welcome Ed and Jolie Gree back, back, uh, back to in-person worship. Um, uh, they, they, it's good to see you uh, again in person. Uh, they, they heard that now that Advent is over and the hanging of the greens is behind us, they were safe to come back again. So, <laughs> you're good for another ten months. <laughs> Our lesson today takes place just after the Sermon on the Plain, where Jesus spent uh, quite a, a bit of time explaining to his disciples and the uh, onlookers or on hearers about what it means to, to follow him and to live in God's kingdom. And so uh, listen to, uh, to what happened on that mountaintop, which was uh, fitting given what they had just heard. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure which was about to, uh, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory, and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, "Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings: one for you, one for Moses." And one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As you know, that usually didn't make much of a difference with Peter. <laughs> uh, he spoke whether he knew what he was talking about or not. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son. My chosen, some translations say beloved, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. And on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, dot, dot, dot. Let us pray. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be completely acceptable in your sight, now and forever. Amen. My sermon today is entitled, Peak Experiences, pun intended. Everybody knows that I love Montreat. I've never been much of a bumper sticker kind of person, but I do have a, I love Montreat bumper sticker on the back of one of our cars. I always tell people that when I get to heaven and, and heaven doesn't look a whole lot like Montreat, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I'll probably stay though. <laughs> if, if, if I may. <laughs> Some of the best fa uh, memories that my family and I have uh, were created at that special place. So. And many of those uh, were at the annual youth conference, uh, a, a place that uh, has a special place deep in my soul. Of course, Montreat is known for its beautiful physical setting in the southern tip of the Black Mountain Range, or Range Let, a spur of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And the view from Lookout Mountain that takes 45 minutes to get to, and it's 45 minutes, 45 degrees up, um, will give you a breathtaking, gobsmacking view of the valley below. But Montreat is not only a place of great physical beauty, it is even more beautiful in spiritual terms. 
Most of my trips there have been during conferences when hundreds, if not a thousand plus, people walking around that place, fellow Presbyterians mostly, who have gathered there for a week of worship and fellowship and learning. So picture this. Hundreds of kindred spirits, people who follow Jesus, who worship the same God, who are on the same page in life, singing hymns, listening to inspiring worship and music, and sitting around in small groups sharing intimate things about their faith in life. That's my treat. It is literally a little bit of heaven on earth, at least for a week. Heck, no one even locks their doors uh, in Montreat at these conferences. Why would you? It's one of the safest places on the face of the earth. Your children can run and play without supervision because the whole place is full of parents who care and love uh, as best they can. You're among friends. Heck, you are friends. It is literally out of this world. The world that we know that keeps us on our toes and looking over our shoulder to see if anyone is watching our back. So, now you know why I love Montreal. I think this helps us understand a little about, a bit about what was going on with Jesus and Peter and James and John, the executive committee of the, the disciples. On top of that, Mount of Transfiguration. We don't know where it is, but uh, there are a few candidates. Mount Tabor is one of them but uh, in the Galilee region, northern Israel. Jesus figured after laying some pretty heavy new interpretations of God's old laws on them in the Sermon on the Plain that, that they needed a little spiritual R&R, retreat and restoration, I like to call it. And notice they, they did go after he, he delivered that sermon where he raised the bar on ethical standards. It's not in the text, but I can imagine the first words out of Peter and James and John's mouths when they reached the summit was, wow, look at that view. Perhaps one of the most beautiful vistas they'd ever seen. You can almost see Asheville from here. <laughs> well, not quite, maybe Jerusalem. But what really caught their attention was what they saw that happened on top of the mountain on which they were standing when Jesus was praying. When they looked at him, they saw him standing there talking to Moses and Elijah who had been dead for centuries. How was that happening? Moreover, Jesus' face was glowing like Moses' face uh, 1,250 years earlier. The text says his face was altered and his garments were a dazzling white. This reminds me of what happened to Moses on that other mountain, Mount Sinai. When God told him not to look at him directly, he'd, he'd wish he hadn't, but he did anyway. And so he came away with a major sunburn and, and uh, uh, wizened hair. That's, that's a euphemism for whitened hair. <laughs> uh, this was such an impressive epiphany for Peter, who didn't know what to say said it anyway, offering to pitch three tents, one for all three of these dignitaries, including Jesus. That's when Peter was interrupted by an even greater theophany, a cloud descending upon the top of the mountain, enveloping them just as it had Moses on Mount Sinai, and a voice, the same voice that Jesus had heard earlier at his baptism, this is my son, my beloved Son, listen to him. And then Jesus was alone. Moses and Elijah departed from whence they came. And Jesus straight away took them down the mountain to the valley where Jesus had work to do. And they had the same work to do. In fact, we are told by Luke what this holy trinity, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, were talking about on top of the mountain was. Jesus' work that was about to culminate in Jerusalem three years uh, after a long ministry. Actually, a short ministry. And sure enough, the crowds found Jesus when they got back and they presented him a boy who had been 
possessed by demons and he characteristically healed him out of love and compassion. Now, I don't know about you, but when I go to the mountains or the ocean or a beautiful lake in a quiet place, uh, I always want to stay longer than I had planned. <laughs> There's something about it that gets a hold of me and says, don't go, don't go, not yet, not yet. I think that's what Peter <clears throat> was feeling in, uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was such an overwhelming experience, spiritual experience that, that, that he wanted to stay, to, to erect some tents and just, just stay and and savor this uh, rarefied air and, and experience. <clears throat> but we go to the mountaintop not to live there, but to be restored, to be refreshed, to have our batteries recharged for the work that God calls us to do down here in the valley, where people live every day and where the needs are the greatest. Do you remember when Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab in northern part of the country after the division, uh, killed most of Israel's prophets because Elijah had the temerity to defeat the prophets of Baal, her religion, in a contest? So Elijah left town and skedaddled back to Mount Sinai to find some safety and comfort. God shows up in a cloud again. Not a thunderbolt, not a tornado, but a still small voice that said, Elijah, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. You belong there where I sent you. And so Elijah climbed down the mountain and went back to Bethel and continued to do the work for which God had commissioned him. You know, God really didn't put us in this world uh, to be comfortable and happy. Comfort and happiness are overrated. They don't hold a candle to the joy, the kind of joy and peace that God really wants us all to have that comes only from knowing and serving God and one another. That's, that's really why we're here, to love. Augustine said God has made us restless and we remain forever restless until we find our peace our rest in God Pascal said the human heart has a hole in it shaped like God that can be filled only with something shaped like God but many of us spend a lifetime trying to fill that hole with other things and it doesn't work at a graveside service, a rather small crowd had gathered around the grave of a very wealthy man. One neighbor looked to another neighbor and looked down into the, the grave and said, I wonder how much he left behind. To which the, his neighbor said, all of it. At the end, the only things we get to keep are the things we've given away to others. How much we have loved others. You know, you need to be careful about loving others. It can lead to an enlarged heart. Did you notice the words Jesus heard on the mountain? From the, the uh, top uh, there, uh, Mount Transfiguration, were almost identical to the ones he heard at his baptism. But uh, there was another phrase that God added on the mountaintop, and that was, listen to him. But as soon as those words were uttered, Moses and Elisha were gone. And Jesus was left standing alone. It was on his shoulders now. So God must have meant when he said, listen to Jesus and not to Moses or Elijah. Because Jesus is the one now. They had their turn in God's mighty acts. And it's almost like they were showing up in passing the baton to Jesus, who was going to run the last leg of the race. Now, I want you to know that the choice of Moses and Elijah was not a random choice from the pantheon of leaders in uh, Israel. It could have chosen Abraham uh, or um, uh, King David. Uh, the list is long, but he chose, uh, he chose Moses and Elijah. 
God had given the law, the commandments to Moses, and Elijah was one of the <coughs> first prophets God sent to hold kings and God's people accountable to those laws. So Moses and Elijah represented two-thirds of the Hebrew Bible, the, the Torah, or the Tanakh. Uh, the law was the Torah, and the uh, Nehemim were, was the, were the prophets, uh, and, and the last third, of course, were the writings, but those writings basically just were interpretations of what God had done in the law and the prophets. Some people think God had sent Jesus into the world to replace the law and the prophets, that they were no longer relevant. But Jesus disagreed with that. He said, I came not to abolish the law and the prophets, I came to fulfill them. Hang on to that word a minute. Fulfill them, to be made whole, to be made complete to be made in their highest and best version. John wrote that Jesus told his disciples that he had come into the world so that their joy might be complete. A good synonym for um, fulfilled. In fact, he said to be as complete as his joy was. Now on Wednesday of this week, the season of Lent begins. Lent is not the happy time that Advent and Christmas are. Then we celebrate the birth of a baby, and everybody loves babies. But during the six weeks of Lent, we, we focus on the suffering, the rejection, the death of Jesus so that we can celebrate his resurrection on Easter that's, that completes, that fulfills, that ends the season of Lent. Uh, <clears throat> many um, let's see I, I ran ahead of myself when you go into almost any church in the world you will not see a, a manger hanging on the front wall celebrating the birth of Jesus instead you will see a cross that celebrates his death somewhat ironically when Jesus died, according to John's gospel, the last words he uttered were, it is finished. Now, the Greek word for finished is ambiguous. It has a few different definitions. It can mean over, it is over, uh, it is done, uh, kaput. But it can also mean completed or fulfilled. That first definition can mean that Jesus was saying to the people gathered around the cross, go home, it's over. You backed the wrong horse, Rome won. But many, including your pastor, believe that Jesus meant the second definition of that word. In other words, I have completed or fulfilled the mission that God sent me to do. So hang in there, keep the faith, have hope. Don't go anywhere. Remember what I said about the third day? Do you remember what Moses and Elijah and Jesus were talking about up there on the mountaintop? About his departure in Jerusalem. It is finished, Jesus said. It has been completed. It has been accomplished. Later on, uh, Jesus would take his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, a major Roman and pagan center in northern Israel, and ask who people thought he was. One of the rumors running around was that he was Elijah, come back to life, or one of the other prophets. And then when Jesus asked them who they thought he was, Peter got it right. You are the Christ the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But then you remember what, what Jesus said after that that got Peter all riled up. He said he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised from the dead. That's when Peter rebuked him. And that's when Jesus uh, dressed him down by saying, if you do not understand the place and the role of suffering, 
and the forgiveness of sins and the redemption of the world, then you have no part in me. I wonder if Peter remembered that dressing down on Easter morning. I wonder if we do. Thank God Jesus took his executive committee to the mountaintop to, to see that he was connected to Moses and Elijah, but they had come to pass the baton. And it was up to him to complete, to fulfill the mission that God had begun long ago. And ironically enough, it took place on a cross that did not stand in isolation because three days later, lo and behold, he was alive again. That's the good news of the gospel which Jesus came and completed and fulfilled in version 2.0000. Let us pray. Oh gracious and loving God, here in the, the last part of winter when things are so cold and bleak, we give you thanks that spring is a coming so is Easter. Oh God, our world is torn apart right now by war and rumors of war and crime and injustice and a whole lot of unrighteousness. So God, we pray that we would keep our eyes on Jesus, who though he died on a cross on Good Friday, was alive and well on Easter morning. And that has made all the difference. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able while we affirm what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Allow me some announcements and concerns and celebrations before we go to God in prayer. As I mentioned earlier, our Youth Sunday is coming up on March the 13th. Also, uh, parents of children 12 and under, uh, we're going to, uh, no pun intended, resurrect uh, the the uh, Easter egg hunt on, on Easter. Uh, it's been two years, I believe, since we did that. And so um, please call Katie Smith or email her to let her know if uh, you uh, as parents are, uh, will have your children here for that event. It'll take place uh, on our front lawn and back lawn too. Say a word of a prayer for our nominating committee as they are uh, 
fulfilling their responsibility. And, and if you have someone you wish to nominate, including yourself, please uh, speak to uh, any listed here on the nominating committee. Laura Piazza is our chair. Um, care concerns, uh, Becky Everett uh, is recovering nicely from knee replacement surgery that took place on Monday. Uh, she's at home. June Goodwin is in rehab now, recovering from her knee replacement surgery, doing well. Richard Piazza continues to need our prayers. Um, J.D. Stanley also needs our prayers. Uh, keep Dorothy Denby Page in your prayers. Also, uh, please keep Mark Johnson and his wife Karen Dukes, who are en route to Florida to pick up his mother to drive to New Jersey to attend the funeral of his sister who tragically died in a house fire in New Jersey last week uh, and then to drive his mother back to Florida and then back to Raleigh. So uh, traveling mercies uh, for that long journey and may God bring them comfort and peace in this uh, very sad time. Uh, I, I call your attention to all the other prayer concerns listed there on, on the page. Uh, and ask if there are other concerns or celebrations this morning. Yes. Um, Emma turned 13 this week. <laughs> oh, boy. On Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you'll have to reach to put the sign of the cross on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday, Emma. Uh, other concerns, celebration? Yes, Laura. Anybody I know? <laughs> oh, Lord. It's like, it's kind of like uh, Mark Twain attending his own funeral on the balcony, you know. It was a weird feeling. Are you talking about me? Then let us pray. O gracious God, God of all kindness, you gave us your only son because you love the world that much. And so we pray for the peace of the world. Move among us by your spirit, breaking down barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred. Heal the human family of its divisions and unite it in the bonds of justice and peace. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, for safety and comfort and courage in this uh, act of aggression by a neighboring com co country that is beyond belief by the rest of the world. So we pray that the Holy Spirit would move amongst all who are involved in this conflict that reason and understanding and compassion for neighbors would reign and prevail. O oh God, we pray for our own country, enrich our common life, strengthen the forces of truth and goodness, teach us to share our prosperity, that those whose lives are impoverished may pass from need and despair to dignity and joy. We pray today for those who suffer. Surround them with your love, support them with your strength, console them with your comfort, and give them hope and courage beyond themselves. O oh God, we pray for our families, for those whom we love. Protect them at home. Support them in times of difficulty and anxiety. That they may grow together in mutual love and understanding. And rest content in one another. 
Oh God, we give you thanks that it appears that this pandemic is on its way out of town. We pray that wisdom shall continue to prevail and good citizenship. And we give thanks for those who are helping to heal the sick and to comfort those who have lost loved ones. Oh God, we pray for the church. Keep us true to the gospel and responsive to the gifts and needs of all. Make known your saving power in Jesus Christ. By the witness of our faith, our worship, and even our lives. Hear us now in the way he taught his disciples to pray long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with 